so often in computer science, we need to construct a tree data structure to solve a complex problem. Sometimes the tree lets us solve the entire problem. Sometimes it's just one step to a multi-part solution. In a lot of these cases, your first instinct is going to be to try and rewrite the tree code yourself. But if the tree that you need is fairly generic, you might be better off using one of the library classes. In this demo, we're going to show you how to use the tree class that's built into Swing. Now, Swing has already become a little bit outdated with the advent of JavaFX for doing most graphical user interfaces in Java. But the tree class that's built into Swing is actually independent of Swing. In this video, we're going to show you how to display trees using the Swing default mutable tree node class inside of the graphical user interface that Swing provides, but also outside of it. Let's have a look at this particular tree that we've built right here, which shows the planets and some of their moons. Consider how small the code is we've got here to generate this beautiful tree. Here I've created all the nodes. Here I've assigned all the nodes to their appropriate parents. And this little bit of code here is the swing code that's used to display this particular tree. We've got some imports here from the swing library, but it turns out that we don't need to even use these swing components to display our tree. Let's look at another version of this code, this time that doesn't use any of the swing components. Here's another version of the same code. This time we've taken out all the Java graphical swing components. Instead, we've written our own little method here to print the tree with help from this other helper method which prints an individual node. Note that the print method is recursive, which makes sense for a tree structure of unknown depth. The way that this print method works is that after printing information about the current node, it iterates through all of its children using this for loop. Note that the getChildCount method allows us to figure out how many children there are for this particular node, and then we simply index from 0 to n and get each node in turn and print it. The reason we need this cast operator here for default mutable tree node is that this getChildAt method returns a regular tree node. This cast is safe here because all the members of our tree are of type default mutable tree node. Here is the output shown. Notice that the number of dashes is calculated using the getLevel method, which allows us to figure out how deep in the tree we are and therefore how many dashes we should include in the final diagram. At this time, it might be worthwhile looking over some of the main methods that are used to create this tree. Let's start with the constructor, which is this one right here. Now there are several variations on this, one that does not require you to specify any kind of an object that the tree will hold, but in our tree we're going to have a simple string be the object that the tree holds in each node. On the first line you saw how the root node was created. You can see how the other nodes are created very similarly, the only difference being that the root node is not going to have a parent. Here we use the add method to specify which children belong to which parents in our tree. In summary, let's discuss some of the advantages of using the default mutable tree node versus writing your own tree class. First, all the basic and some advanced features are readily available at your fingertips. If you need a generic tree, this is an excellent choice. The amount of code you have to write to print a tree is surprisingly small. You can choose to use the existing Swing library components to use the Swing graphical user interface, or as we have demonstrated, you can write your own with just a little bit of extra code. We hope that this class will help you significantly simplify your program design and development when needing trees.